Question 5 says, when at rest, two trains have sirens that emit frequencies of 300 hertz. The trains travel toward one another and toward an observer stationed between them. One of the trains moves at 32.5 meters per second, and the observer hears a beat frequency of 2.9 beats per second. What is the speed of the second train, which travels faster than 32.5 meters per second? Alright, so here we have Super Physics Kid, and he hears a train coming from uh, roughly from this direction, and he knows how fast this train is moving, and he knows what the, the frequency of the train's whistle is. And, and then he hears another train coming from this direction, and he knows the frequency of this train should be the same, but he hears a beat. And so he knows by, by timing that beat, he can figure out how fast this train is moving. So what's going on is because the Doppler effect, the two trains moving at different speeds are producing a different frequency wavelength. And so with the different frequency wavelength, when they... Uh, when they distort each other, when they come together, there's some distortion. And so what you see here is, is at, at this point, the waves are combining together and, and making a much larger wave. And at this point, the waves are canceling each other out. So what you get is, is basically like a wave like, like this. It's flat here, and then maybe here it's shooting down quite a bit. And then it, it, it right here, it's, it's uh, so here it, it's adding here it's adding here it's canceling out so it's canceling out right there so every time you have these amplitudes there's a beat followed by a period of silence and then another beat and then a well this got two beats together which it should be just a period of silence but my wave doesn't match up perfectly which probably means that the waves I drew are not sine waves but that's okay we know that the, the frequency of the beats is equal to the absolute value of frequency well let me let me mark that out of frequency one minus frequency two. And it doesn't matter what order you put frequency one and frequency two in, uh, because the absolute value, you're always going to get the same positive number. The only thing we know right now is the frequency of the beats. So the frequency of the beats is equal to uh, 2.9. It's 2.9 beats per second. And uh, we're going to use the, the Doppler effect to figure out what the frequency of the first train was. It says it has a, a frequency of 300 hertz, but the Doppler effect is going to adjust that a little bit. And then once we figure out the, dop, uh, the, the frequency that the observer hears of the first train, we can figure out the frequency of the, the observer heard of the second train from this equation and then we can use what the observer heard and plug it back into the Doppler uh, equation and reverse it and figure out how fast the train is going. So the frequency one is what we're trying to find out. So the frequency that the that the observer heard is equal to is equal to the frequency of the source multiplied by the velocity that the sound travels uh, through air plus the plus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity that the sound travels minus the velocity of the source. So the observer, he's standing still, so this is going to equal zero. The velocity of the source, it's moving in the positive direction, so anytime it's moving in the positive direction, we don't change the sign. Uh, so it's going to be the, the velocity that travels through the air, which is about 334, so 334 plus 0 divided by 334 minus the velocity of the source, which is 32.5 meters per second. And we know that the frequency of the source that tells us in the problem is 300 hertz. So 300 times, so what we get is that the frequency that the observer hears is 300 times 334 divided by 334 minus 32.5. So divide it by 301.5. So the, the frequency that the observer hears or should hear is 332.3 hertz. So the train was the train emits 330 hertz, and because it's because of the Doppler effect, the observer hears 332.3 hertz. 
And now the frequency of beats, like we said, is equal to the absolute value of, of F1 minus F2. And, and the thing you want to note here is that with, with the frequency F1 minus F2, what we have to note is there's two possible answers. There's, there's two possibilities here because um, F1 could be less than F2 or it could be greater than F2. And so either way, we should get an absolute value with the same thing. But whenever we try to solve for either F2 or F1, we have to, we have to solve two different ways because uh, let's, say that, let's say that the frequency of the beats is 1. And that is that is from from uh, one minus minus three. So if, if frequency one was one and frequency two was three, then we would have an answer of negative two on this side. But the or let's um, I'm sorry, let's make that a two. Uh, we'd have an, in this case we'd have an answer of negative one on this side, and and the absolute value of that is one. But the other possibility is that frequency one could be two and frequency two could be one, in that case we would have the same answer. And so what we have to deduce here is which one is going to be greater. And it tells us in the problem that the second train is traveling faster. And so when it travels faster, we can, we can tell from the, the Doppler equation that it's going to have a higher frequency. And so in this case, whenever I solve for F2, I want to I set it up as, as the uh, frequency of the beats is equal to the absolute value of F2 minus F1 because it's going to give me the same answer in absolute value but whenever I, I solve for F2 I, I just add F1 to the other side so F1 plus the frequency of the beats equals F2 because F2 is greater if it was if it was smaller then I would have to do F1 uh, F the frequency of the beats minus F1 equals negative F2 and then I would I would um, multiply negative 1 on both sides and I would get the frequency 1 minus the frequency of the beats is equal to F2 and so rather than a plus sign I would get a minus sign if frequency 2 was lower so F1 we, we, we said we want F1 plus the frequency of the beats and so F1 we decided was 332 because we're measuring this from the observer. The observer is hearing the beats so we have to measure the frequency that the observer hears. So 332.3 plus the frequency of the beats was 2.9 so we should get that the, the frequency of the second train is, is roughly um, 335.3 Point two. So this is the frequency that the that the kid hears from the second train. 300, 335.2 hertz. Now remember again the Doppler equation. The frequency that the observer hears is equal to the frequency of the source times the velocity that sound travels pl uh, plus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity that sound travels minus the velocity of the source. And so now we need to solve for velocity of the source in order to know how fast the second train was going. And so we can do that. So this is uh, the number we got up here. This is the F, this is the F0 in this case. So F02 because we're talking about the second train. So the first thing I want to do to make it uh, simpler for me is I'm going to take the inverse of both sides so 1 over the frequency of the of, that the observer heard equals so equals the velocity the the velocity that that sound travels minus the velocity of the source divided by the frequency of the source times the velocity that sound travels plus the velocity of the observer and so now I can I can multiply the bottom of this equation to both sides and I will get let me move this out of the way so I move all this up I will get that the the velocity the frequency of the source times the velocity that sound travels plus the velocity of the observer divided by the frequency from the observer 
is equal to the velocity that the sound travels minus the velocity of the source. And now you can see the only thing that's left to do is to, to subtract this over to this side and then multiply everything by negative 1. And so what you'll get is that the, the velocity of the source of the sound is equal to the velocity that sound travels through the air minus the frequency of the source times times the the velocity that sound travels plus the velocity of the observer divided by the frequency uh, from the observer and now we have an equation that we can just plug in some numbers and get the velocity of the source and so v is 334 that's the the speed of sound through the air and um, now, of course, that's temperature dependent, but even though it's temperature dependent, this problem doesn't give us the temperature, so we just have to assume that that's, that's the one that they want. So, th so the frequency of the source is, it tells us in the problem, is 300 hertz. Again, both, both trains are at 300 hertz. And then, so the velocity, again, uh, we're saying is 334. And we're adding to that the velocity of the observer is zero, so we're adding nothing to that. And we're, of course we're dividing it by the frequency from the observer, which was 335.2, 335.2, and, and of course this is over the whole thing, 335.2. Okay, so I, I felt like it was getting crowded on that other screen, so I, I copied everything over. Um, and basically, once you plug in all your numbers, the value you should get for the velocity of the source is 35, roughly 35.07399 is what I got just plugging in these numbers. Um, whenever I did it originally, I, I carried my decimals a little bit further, and I got uh, 35.10814. 10814. So I think it should, it's roughly the same, and I think it should, both of, either one should work in WebAssign, so whatever your numbers are, you can carry your decimals further, or you can choose not to.